So in this part of orientation, we are going to talk about week two, and I'm going to talk just for a minute about connection, which is the theme of week two, and then Martha is going to walk you through the curriculum, so you'll see what's on deck. Um, so again, ACE is built around adaptability, which we covered last week, connection, which is this week, and equity, which is next week. Um, the idea behind connection is particularly for us at Plymouth State motivated by cluster learning and also by my concern that if you only took quality matters or you only modeled an online course off of online courses that you had taken at other places that you could you could end up with a cookie cutter online course that loses a lot of what we at Plymouth State say is at the heart of our pedagogy. So we talk about things like collaborating with your peers, the personal relationships you're going to have with professors, being engaged with projects. All of those things are harder to do in online environments in some ways. And as a result, a lot of online classes that are built look much more like working at your own pace independently um, without a lot of um, collaboration between people. And that's probably okay here and there, especially for fall or for last spring. It's like, oh my God, we just do what we got to do to get by. But if all of our courses at Plymouth State this fall take that kind of model, we are going to have a massive problem where students feel disconnected from the reason that they chose Plymouth in the first place. Because I can guarantee most people who chose Plymouth felt like they were going to have good teachers who were really invested in building relationships with them. So in this section of the ACE framework, we are looking primarily at how to build connection and community in, um, in remote, hybrid, high flex, and online spaces. We assume that if you are fully face-to-face -face the entire semester, you've sort of got that covered because that's sort of our wheelhouse. But because most of us, even if we're teaching face to face, are probably going to have half of our students online at any given time because the social distancing rules don't allow us to be all together. We have to find ways to tackle um, those kinds of uh, community building efforts using technology. Um, I also want to let you know that as an observer to the academic reopening task force, you are definitely going to get an email. I hope it's going to be this week. Um, I shared it with some of the mentors, so they've got some more information already. If, you, if you're a mentor, you can look in the mentor private channel for info on this. But you're going to get an email um, from that academic reopening task force that's going to tell you a little more about what your face-to-face -face class is going to look like this fall. Um, because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there where faculty think if you're teaching a face-to-face -face this fall, you're just teaching a normal class, but that ain't not the case. Um, when you get that email, it'll help you understand a little bit more about how many students can fit in your room, um, what group work might look like. So for example, um, if you have a face-to-face -face class, you still might not be able to have students work together in a pod of five people facing each other sitting at a table um, because they may have to stay in their assigned seats uh, basically facing forward. So this unit this week is really designed to help you work with some of those limitations imposed by being online when you can't necessarily just throw students together and count on the proximity to help those relationships cultivate. You have to be a little bit more intentional about it. The cool thing about that is whenever we are intentional about something, there's probably a better chance we're gonna succeed at it. So in the classroom, we're not always intentional about community building. I'm actually looking at Trish when I say this because I know some people are very intentional about community building in the classroom, but lots of us are focused on our content and we just leave that stuff you know, to the ether. And that probably means that some of your students are getting left out. They are not feeling part of the community. Um, with our online spaces, because we have to be more intentional about that, we may actually have a better chance of succeeding at including all of our students. Um, so that's what we're gonna focus on this week. And Martha is going to take a quick tour through the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday architecture of week two, so you understand what's coming. Hey everybody, I'm back. Um, I'm just on the ACE workshop um, website. You can follow along, you can just watch. <clears throat> I'm gonna click through to week two. And um, the good news is that the structure of the week 
um, is almost identical to week one. So, you know, the first week you go through a structure, it all feels completely new because you've never experienced it before. But hopefully this week things that'll start to seem a little bit more familiar. And by next week, you'll be old hat with it. Um, just to start at the beginning under resources and opportunities, a reminder that every morning from 8.30 to 9.30, one of us from the collab, sometimes two of us or three, um, are in this room in Zoom available to meet and talk um, about any questions or concerns you have. Um, so feel free to drop in on those hours. If you can't make those hours, as Robin said, feel free to make an appointment with us on the collab website. Um, something fun this week, we added um, an event on Wednesday from 7 to 8 in the Zoom room. We're going to play Pictionary. Uh, we don't know what that means. We don't know what that's going to look like, but we're sure it's going to be lots of fun. So take an hour Wednesday night, join us, draw things that nobody else knows what they are, and we'll all laugh. Um, and then for Get Out of Town, we have a couple of different opportunities that are external to PSU or ACE. Um, some colleagues at St. Norbert College and Bryn Mawr, Mawr are doing a, um, prof a free professional development event this week, the 20th through 24th, um, that's dealing with lots of the same things as they prepare for the fall term. You may want to register, drop in, see what's on the schedule. In addition, Mike Caulfield, um, a friend and colleague of ours, has put together this great website, Blended Content Studio, that's really um, focused on resources and advice for faculty who need to deliver content through video, how to make that engaging. Um, it's really practical, um, but also has lots of great kind of um, the ideas that underpin the theories of what's behind ACE. So, you might want to check that out. That's not a synchronous thing. You can just drop in and look at the website. Um, this week on Tuesday, tomorrow, um, from 10 to 12, is that the right time? Can you check that? Okay. From 10 to 12 tomorrow, um, the Cluster Pedagogy Learning Community has their meeting tomorrow morning. And from 10 to 12, we're going to do a little bit of a crossover. Um, we're going to be talking about online community building in CPLC this week with some folks. There's going to be a panel discussion with some people who are in this Zoom room and some other folks. Um, check the discussion um, forum, the team space for ACE, and we will share that Zoom link there. If you'd like to drop in, you're more than welcome to. If you're not a member of CPLC, feel free to come and be a part of that discussion. Tomorrow, okay, I do want to tell you there's going to be a very cool faculty panel. Uh, Liz is on it, Nick, Gail, Mears, Laura, talking about how they've um, participated in online communities. So there's some cool stuff happening um, at that Cluster Pedagogy Learning Community. So that is open to all of you, 10 to 12, if you would like to um, participate. Are we recording that too, Robin? Did we? Mm -hmm. remember? I feel like I am not going to promise a yes on that. We have to think it through based on privacy and stuff. So I, I, I would not, I'd say if you're really interested, try to come live. Um, this week in tech, <clears throat> again at one o'clock on Tuesday, Jason is going to be doing another session. This one is going to be about creating online lectures. It actually dovetails really nice with that resource from Mike Caulfield. Um, so both of those things are things you should check out if recording content, lectures, introductions um, to uh, topics is something that you want to do for this fall. Um, Learning cohorts should also have another one hour meeting scheduled this week. And here are some questions that we're asking you to maybe use to jumpstart conversation in those meetings. Um, make sure you set that up and check those questions out. Um, and then moving into the schedule, um, again, today is just kind of an introduction. We've got a review of the week two checklist. So there's a new checklist for this week, making notes about items you wanna work on in your workbook. Um, some questions to reflect on in the discussion forum um, to get us started with the week. On Tuesday, we'll be jumping into the two practices in the ACE um, framework that um, are at the course level for connection. Those are curriculum, curriculum linked to context. So thinking about how your curriculum can reflect and engage with what's happening in the world right now, um, as well as foster classroom communities. So something I know a lot of people are interested in in online and hybrid spaces, how do we think really intentionally about community and building community with and among our students? Some readings, some optional exploration, and then one choose one of those assignments to work on in your workbook. On Wednesday, we look at the assignment level practices for connection, which are reduced disposability, something that's already come up a couple times, but this is basically thinking about assignments um, 
that have uh, a longer life than just the student doing it and turning in and never looking at it again. Um, an internet as classroom and community, which is really thinking about positioning the work of your class in the ecosystem of the open web and the internet, as opposed to behind just walled gardens that don't really look outward or invite anything inward. Um, again, some reading, some exploration, and um, pick one of those assignments to work on. Thursday, again, is engagement day. So this is the chance to go out and look at what other people have been saying, um, share and comment, um, maybe participate on a Twitter um, with the ACE Framework hashtag, conversa a conversation on Twitter with that. Um, this is also where the bonus activity about rigor is located. I placed this here, again, an essay, an older essay that you might want to read, a more recent Twitter thread. And there is a discussion, a Teams channel for this week just dedicated to rigor, where you're welcome to go in and share your thoughts and reflections, um, both about those readings, but also about your own experiences. And finally, Friday, again, is design day, where you review the checklist, um, do some more work in your workbook, maybe reply to any discussion forum postings that you missed that um, are particularly important or interesting to you. That was a whirlwind, but I wanted to be cognizant of time. Everything is here on this page. Again, if you go to the workshop website um, and click on week two, you will find everything there. Okay, we will stop recording.